Hi, I'm very excited to start a new cycle of Pirkei Avot, Ethics of the Fathers or Tractate of the Fathers. And um, the one we're going to do today is from the first chapter, and it goes like this. Antigonos ish Soho. Somebody named Antigonos came from a place called Soho. Kibel mishim on tzadik. He received this tradition from Shimon Atzadik. And he used to say, Hu haya omer, al avadim. Don't be like servants. Hamishamshim et arav al menat lekabel pras. Who serve their master in order to get reward, or in order to get a prize, or brownie points in the sky. Ela hevu avadim hamishamshim et arav shelo al menat lekabel pras. But rather you should be like servants or like workers who serve their boss or who work at their office shelo al menat lekabel pras. Not in order to get reward, like almost like l'shem shemai, like for the right reasons. Don't do it to get a salary, to get a reward, to get brownie points, but rather to you, just do it for the right reasons. Serve God, do mitzvot, stay away from Ave Road in order to, um, just for the right reasons, without any, without any like side benefits, that you're not expecting to get some kind of real reward. That's not why you're... You're sticking to this way of life. Vihi, and it ends with this, Mora shamayim alechem, and the fear of heaven shall be upon you. So asks Rav, uh, asks Nitivot Shalom, which had, he has a whole uh, section on Pirkei Avot at the end of Bamidbar. Uh, no, at the end of Vayikra, okay? Because the end of Vayikra comes out around the beginning of the summer, which is when we start saying Pirkei Avot. So he asks like this. He says, first of all, it's obvious that when we serve God, we should do it for the right reasons. We shouldn't be thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to get some fun lollipop up in the sky. You know, what? of course we're doing it for the right reasons, because it's meaningful, because we're serving God, because we feel like, you know, this is the right thing to do. This gives us purpose. You know, why otherwise would we do it? And secondly, he asks this question, why does it say at the end, you should have the fear of heaven upon you. Like, this is a known thing. We're always supposed to fear God. And so it's a strange thing. Look, what's he adding? What's the insight? And his third question is, why does it say the fear of heaven and not like the fear of God? And what does it have to do with this whole concept of serving God for the right reasons and not, you know, expecting some prize at the end of the day? So he says like this. There can be a person. There is such a thing. Yesh asher Yehudi oved la barach. It could be that there's a Jewish person who's serving God, who's doing all the mitzvot, all every possible halacha. He's keeping to the T. And he is really very, very religious. But in the end of the day, he, it doesn't bring him to a relationship with God. It doesn't bring him to divikut, to attachment with Hashem. It only, he's just doing it out of rote, either by rote, because that's how he grew up, or he's, um, he's doing it out of this feeling of, um, you know, I have to do this. I have to do this. Somebody told me I have to do it, right? But it, it's just like very dry. It's not with passion. It's not with excitement. So he says like this. That, that kind of a, a Jew, this kind of a person, will get, obviously, his reward in the next world. But that's all he's going to get, meaning he's not going to get the real benefit of doing mitzvot, which is the relationship with God. And he says, on the other hand, a person, this is called almanat lekabel pras, in order to get olam haba, you're getting the world to come, you're going to get your reward, don't worry, right? But He's not going to enjoy doing the mitzvot. And he's going to have a bit of a, I don't know if I would say boring life, but a very um, dry existence. Because he's doing things without enthusiasm, without passion, without real understanding as to the ultimate purpose of everything. Whereas another kind of person, which is what we are supposed to do, is we are supposed to do mitzvot. Okay. We are supposed to feel such energy, such excitement, such joy when we do a mitzvah. Because we feel that connection. 
We feel like, wow, our life is meaningful. Our life is purposeful. We have a relationship with God. God is with us. God loves us. What could be better than being in a relationship with an infinite being who loves us? It's crazy if you think about it. And that knowledge and that feeling should infuse all our service of Hashem. And it should make us feel so excited every day, so passionate, so joyful, so calm, so worryless, right? Completely worry-free. I think that's a better word. And serene, right? Because we just have this insane life of like beauty. I know. Right? Like, halavai. We wish. But that is really theoretically what our life could be like. If we were not thinking about, oh, I need to do this. Or I am not allowed to do this because otherwise I will get a punishment. Right? So he's talking about this kind of person that works on loving Hashem. And realizing that Hashem loves us back. And a person like that does not live in a world of fear. Right? We live in a world of love. And so he has to remind us this Antigonos, Ish Soho, that is so clear about how we have to be serving God with passion and with joy. He has to remind us, oh, but just remember, there's something called fear of heaven. And you really need both. You can't just work with love. Because when you work with love, I don't know if you feel this, ladies, I would like to hope that we all do feel that feeling that God loves us and everything is good. So when you feel that, it could lead you to complacency. It could lead you to not really care about the details of the laws so much. Like, you know, like you could say to yourself, okay, God loves me. God's going to forgive me anyway. So even because we don't realize, we don't understand how even the details of the laws are there for our benefit and for the tweaking of that relationship. So we kind of think, ah, oh, Hashem loves us anyway. Whatever we do is good, right? And so it leads to a, a little bit of mediocrity. So, says Antigonos Ish Soho, don't forget, you should be serving Hashem with passion and excitement. And don't think about the reward. You're going to get the reward. But what's most important is you're going to have a relationship, okay, with Hashem, which not, no reward could be as good as that in this world. You're going to be joyful. You're going to be happy. So just focus on that. Focus on the relationship. But don't forget, you also need fear or you need a level of, now listen to this, not fear of punishment and not fear of God, but fear of heaven. He says there's two levels of fear. One is like, um, you know, I'm scared, you know, because God's going to give me a punishment and he's going to give me a slap if I don't do that. And that's a level, okay? It makes you do, you know, things, right? And it makes you scared, you know, to the point where, yeah, you're going to toe the line because you don't want your kids to be sick. You don't want your spouse to be sick. You don't want to be sick yourself, right? There's certain things that are, will motivate you. And I guess that's good, but it's a very low level. And he says the other level, says Nativo Shalom, is the higher level of, Fear, which isn't really even called fear. It's called awe. Awe. You, you, you just realize, oh my gosh, the heavens, right? That's why he says the fear of heaven and not so much the fear of God should be upon you because heaven is all God. It's like you have such awe. You can't believe that this is the God that you have a relationship with. If you heard my um, little talk about Shavuot, it's like, awesome. It's so awesome that the infinite being who created the entire world, the heavens and the earth, all the galaxies, all the planets, it's unbelievable, wants a relationship with little flawed me. It's crazy. That is called fear of heaven. It's fear of this unbelievable, awesome level of, of God, of Hashem, who wants a relationship. And that's what I'm afraid of preventing when I, I focus on this fear. It's not a fear of, oh, I'm going to get a punishment. I'm going to get slapped. I'm going to prevent that relationship with this awesome being. So it's awe and it's also really fear that comes from love. 
right? So that's a really high level of fear. You know how, look, if you love somebody very much, you're more fearful that you may lose out on that relationship or that something will happen to cause the relationship to falter, to um, not work out or whatever. There's a fear, but it's because of love. So that's the kind of fear that we're looking for here. And that is what we're striving to achieve in life. Have a great day, everybody.